What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters, and welcome to No Let's Metal. Going to be doing a rock metal update. That's right. Time for rock metal update. I'm going to be doing a 7 inch update here. A lot of rock, a lot of metal. I'm probably going to split this thing up into two parts because this is the stack. Um, and the first part will be probably be all metal stuff, uh, one-offs, you know, where I only have one album from each of these bands or something like that. Whereas the second stack is probably four to five bands, but there's multiple albums from each band and, and there's some, you know, like, I don't know, you know, family members of the band kind of thing. So anyhow, let's just get right into it. We'll get the first stack going on right here. If I can do it fast enough, might be able to do it in one video, but we'll see. So first of all, always looking for singles from this band, local band growing up for me. So been a fan since uh, they put out their first 45 uh, back when I was in high school. But this is um, a promo copy of I Am The Man on the Island label from Anthrax. Of course, a lot of thrash and metal fans hate this song. It was a joke song. It was a B-side. Uh, it was the band just having fun with a with a uh, with a rap tune, you know, mixing rap and metal together. And uh, you know, they had obviously did more in the future with Public Enemy, and then also with a couple other bands. So uh, a lot of people uh, blame them, if blame is the right word, for the whole rap metal movement that went on in the 2000s. But whatever. I thought it was fun back when it came out. Um, but I don't dislike rap either, so I'm not a huge fan, but I don't dislike it, so I, I never minded it, and I always kind of liked the uh, the under man. It was funny and fun, but uh, this particular one is um, a promo single, same song, both sides, in the original Island Red Sleeve. I just, I've never seen one before, so I was kind of psyched to get that, even though it's definitely not my favorite Anthrax song by any stretch of the imagination. All right, next up, this is um, Judas Priest. This is a four song, four song I believe. EP, might even be more than four, I can't remember now. Sinner, Exciter, Hellbent for Leather, Ripper, Hot Rockin', and Green Mount Leashy. So, what's that, six songs? Counts, one, two, three, four, five songs. So, 33 and a third RPM, uh, UK single, promoting the band's, you know, 70s material. Great photo of the band in the front. Anything from Freeze, especially from the 70s, I'm always after. Love me some Freeze, and there you go. Very cool one. I know it's a very common one in... in, in in Europe and UK, I belong to seven, several seven-inch groups on Facebook, and I see that one get posted quite a bit. So it's not a rare one. I didn't pay a lot for it, but it's just one that I was missing, and one doesn't pop up here in the United States ever. Uh, and then this is also a UK pressing of "Take on the World," back to a Starbreaker in the uh, UK CBS sleeve. Again, anything for priests, you know, for me, I, I jump on it. So, uh, all right, moving on, we got some new wave of British heavy metal. This is a Japanese pressing of Saxon, so this would have been, what, 1980? Um, Heavy Metal Thunder. I am backed with uh, Taking Your Chances. Um, I believe it was 1980. I should have wrote it down. Ni no, maybe by 1981. I think it was 1981. Regardless, very cool on the career label. Japanese pressing, Saxon. And Japanese pressing of... Uh, Susie, hold on. Um, I was trying to see is the B-side. Judgment Day. So this would have been, this one might have been the 1980 single. Yeah, this is a 1980 single. The other one was like 81. So uh, two very cool, kind of rare singles, especially uh, the Heavy Metal Thunder single. So I don't think it ever came out on a single in any other country. So uh, regardless, two classics from the New Wave or British Heavy Metal period in the early 80s, as well as the next one. This is uh, White Spirit, Back to the Grind, and Cheetah. Um, the song Cheetah was on like a bunch of different new wave of heavy metal, new wave British heavy metal compilations back in the day. But this is one that's on a neat label. Um, fairly well known one, uh, fairly well known band, even though they didn't do a, you know, a ton of, of releases and stuff like that. But different members moved on to other bands and, you know, gain some notoriety but regardless if you're a fan of new wave of british heavy metal uh and that whole movement from the you know 79 through 83 84 whatever it was and uh this is one that's worth pick that's worth picking up it's very very good this is one that i didn't i never even heard of until recently always been a fan of the new wave of british heavy movement but i never heard of Degaband. now 
the name sounds absolutely ridiculous to me. I don't have any idea what Dagaband means. I didn't look it up or anything like that, but whatever. Um, but I did enjoy the song. Now, the nice thing about New Wave or British Heavy Metal Movement is it wasn't pegged as you had to sound like this. I mean, you had super heavy, fast stuff like like Raven and Venom. You had stuff that had a big punk influence, like the very first Iron Maiden album, even the first two Iron Maiden albums, or uh, Tank. You know, there was a ton of them that had that kind of mix of punk and, and metal together. And then you had stuff that was more melodic, like uh, Def Leppard, and then stuff that was just straightforward heavy metal, like... Uh, and, Angel Witch, you know, there was just so much great stuff coming out that, during that time, and a lot of it was released as singles, that's the case here too Dagabana was only around for a short time they released uh, two or three singles apparently played a lot of shows, but they didn't release a lot of material um, this uh, came out in 1980 and it's two tracks, Images and I can't remember the other track, I'm going to have to look Images and Test Flight a bit more on the more melodic side of things uh, kind of proggy. Uh, I, I really liked it. Um, made me, I liked it enough that I sought out and have purchased their second single. So you'll probably be seeing that one in an upcoming video in the future. Um, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have even bothered. But I thought this was pretty good. I picked this up from a seller in the UK that I buy a lot of my singles from. It's called Vinyl Tap. Worth checking out if you... Uh, you can see the uh, information there. Worth checking out if you're interested in buying 7-inch singles like I am. Especially from bands from the UK and Europe. Because they sell a lot of... I buy a lot of German singles from them and all kinds of Australian, and obviously, excuse me, Austrian, <laughs> not Australian, just some great stuff at that place. So Vinyl Tap, um, not a paid promotion. <laughs> I uh, I just buy from them a lot and I don't mind sharing the wealth there. So, all right, German band, Accept, Midnight Mover, uh, the only version of it that I've ever seen with a color cover. There's a ton of them out there that were like freebie promotional uh, black and white cover. For that track, but I also think the B-side on this one was different than that one. Um, Wrong is Right is on the B-side of this one. I, I'm almost positive that wasn't the B-side of the, the promo one that came out in the United States and a bunch of other countries. So I'm always after Accept singles. They are hard to find. They're usually expensive. Um, this one is in fairly good shape. It's got this odd um, sticker on there so that you see that little, what looks like an M or a mountain. That's actually on the plastic on the sleeve. But there's, you see the sticker underneath of it, that's actually on the on the cover. And I just tried a hair with my nail to see if it would come up, and no, it's not coming up, so it's staying on there. Um, it's just been on there for way too long, and I'm not going to tear up the cover for a sticker. Uh, anyhow, Midnight Mover. I uh, did not pick this one up from that company. I picked it up from a different company. Continuing on with Accept, this was the album that everybody loves to hate. Um, the song is Generation Clash, backed with D-Train. Um, it was... You know, except Sans uh, Udo, who who left to, to form UDO. Um, and here's the back cover. Uh, I like the album. Now, I'll confess, when the album came out at first, I was disappointed. It didn't sound like Except, and I was always a big Udo fan. And uh, but it's, it really is well done stuff and. The vocals are fantastic. I mean, what a great singer he is. Um, but he was a U.S. singer, and he just didn't quite fit with this band. He's done a lot of other... David Reese, by the way, is the name of the singer, if I didn't mention that. Uh, David Reese has done a lot of other things that have been fantastic. Um, he released that album, several albums, other, but, but Bangalore Choir, among other things. He's got solo albums out. Really great singer. Uh, check him out if you're into, you know, straightforward heavy metal and hard rock. That's kind of what you're going to get here. Uh, my favorite song on th that particular album was not Generation Clash, which is the one that they released as a single, but XTC, which is just a great, very much Accept-like song. And that particular song, UDO, also recorded as a tribute to Accept, which I thought was awesome. All right, next up, this is UFO, um, Too Hot to Handle, and you're probably thinking, don't you already have that? Yes, I do. And I, But whenever I see them for a good price, I grab them anyhow, give them to friends, trade them, whatever. But this particular one I bought the same way. I was maybe under five bucks. And I snatched it up. Ended up being the red vinyl white label promo stereo mono version. So I was like, oh, keeping it. <laughs> um, so yeah, because uh, like I said, I do have um, I believe I have a black vinyl version and I have a red vinyl version. Well, now I have a promo version with the mono, mono stereo on, on it. So I thought that was kind of cool. So keeping it. All right, next up, this is 
a band you don't see or hear much about these days, but Jackal, this is I Stand Alone, backed with uh, Mr. Can You uh, Spare a Dime. I think this was from the first album, if I'm not mistaken, but I really like all the Jackal material. I, I You know, Jesse James, Tupri, um, just a great band. Uh, a lot of people don't like them. They kind of lump them in with hair metal. They don't really sound like, you know, Warrant or even a band like Cinderella. They don't sound like that. They have a unique sound. Of course, everybody knows them as the band that has the uh, um, chainsaw solos in some of their songs, but they were just a fun band. Very much had a big Southern influence. Um, I dig them, so I, you know, they, I'm not going to say they're my favorite band ever, but I do like them and I do listen to them. So I found that single very inexpensive. It's in mint shape, so I grabbed it. This one here I didn't know existed until uh, I saw the singer sh showing singles that had been released in this band. And I do have this single as a regular RCA release with two different songs. This is the stereo mono uh, version that is a promo pressing only. Uh, found it really fast. Right as soon as I, I got online, I started looking. Found a copy on eBay for almost nothing. Snatched it up. Then I started looking around. And I couldn't find any other copies. Even on um, Discogs, didn't have any. So it's not as easy to find as the other 7-inch single for uh, the song is Do You Love Me? This is actually a remixed version um, that was made for radio. So it was remixed, uh, remixed single version. And like I said, stereo, I believe it was stereo and mono. Maybe it's both sides for stereo. But you can see right on there it does say Not For Sale. Mass. Great band. Boston, Massachusetts, which is where their name comes from. Several people think they're a Christian band. I, 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 I can't speak for their personal faith, but I can tell you that they're not a Christian band and they don't try to be out there, you know, being a Christian band. They, their songs are about everything. From They do have songs about God, but they have songs about watching her walk. And if you're a guy, you know what that means. So it has nothing to do with, you know, Christianity. So this is cool. I like rap. Never was one of my favorite bands, but I love the first EP and the first couple albums. Um, you know, again, this is a band that's pretty much um, enshrined as the uh, leaders of glam metal or what they now call butt rock or uh, hair metal, which, whatever, it's just metal. Rat was on the very first um, Metal Blade, Metal Massacre album, along with Metallica and Sears Ungle. So, I mean, to me, they were always just a metal band. Yeah, they did get, definitely got more glammy, more commercial as they went on, and you know who could blame them? They uh, they were they were very successful and at it. So, uh, but anyhow, this is um, a promo uh, a single for Round and Round, backed with uh, You Think You're Tough, and this was a UK pressing, and this is another one as you can see from the little sticker on the on the white sleeve there, vinyl tab. So, not that it's a secret, but. When it, I'm always looking for singles, especially by some of my favorite bands. Bands like the Scorpions and Aerosmith and Judas Priest and Ted Nugent and Black Sabbath. And, you know, some just some of my all-time favorite bands, Anthrax and Megadeth. Just those kind of bands. And if I find something that I'm, you know, you know, maybe I found, maybe I was looking for, I don't know. Say I found a Scorpion single on Vinyl Tap. Well, once I do that and I'm buying from another country, okay, that's going to be shipping. You know, you're going to pay a good price for shipping. This this place actually is very, is very fair when they're shipping. But regardless, um, once I find that and add it to my cart and say like eBay or on their store, I immediately go and start looking what other seven inch singles do they have. I need to make this shipping worthwhile. <laughs> and that's kind of how I got this one. I don't usually search out rat seven inch singles, but that one was in, the, in on their store, and I was like, add to cart. Add to cart, add to cart. You know, you just find good stuff, and that's kind of how I how I do it. And that's where a lot of these one-offs come from. Um, when you start seeing me showing like, you know, uh, Scorpion singles, and I'm showing you know a Japanese single from 1975, uh, that's completely different. <laughs> that's something I searched out. So this is another example of that. This is Quiet Riot. Um, Winner takes all. Now I do like Quiet Riot. Um, I saw them on their uh, Metal Health tour, opening up for Black Sabbath back in '83. Um, I like Quiet Riot. They're not my favorite band, but I do like them. But uh, I probably wouldn't be searching out Quiet Riot singles. And then this one popped up when I was looking for something else. Um, so this is kind of a cool single. Never even knew it existed. Gotta love that face that Kevin Dubrow's making right there. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, Winner Takes All backed with Red Alert. UK single. And excuse my sniffling and my very rough voice. I... I, I couldn't even talk a few days ago, so I'm glad I'm actually able to talk now. Uh, just I got beat up by allergies, so um, just took my voice away. It was very odd. Even went to the doctor, and the doctor's like, no, just allergies is what it is. All right, next up, 
Pretty Maids from the same seller. I like Pretty Maids. Again, not a band I necessarily would search out 7-inch singles for, but, you know, they had something else I was looking for, and I snatched that up, and I added two or three other singles to my collect to my cart, and I bought those along with it. A lot of these singles aren't real expensive in Europe. They're expensive here. If you go on eBay and buy from an eBay seller here, this thing's going to sell for 15 20 bucks plus, you know, two, three, four, six bucks shipping. No, this probably was like, I'm sure it was under $10. I wouldn't have picked it up. Um, so, you know, very, very worthwhile picking up. That's why I buy from a lot of these European sellers. They have very fair prices on 7-inch singles you just don't see in the United States very often. So, all right, next up, getting into some newer, newer bands, newer metal stuff. This is Holy Grail, Season's Greetings. This is literally the only Holy Grail single I was missing. My buddy Rob Caldwell hooked me up with this copy. He had it, didn't want it, and literally gave it to me as a gift. So uh, thanks, Rob. But it is two cover songs from Holy Grail. So side A is No Presents for Christmas by King Diamond. And the B side is Kill the King by Rainbow. Um, kind of a fun single, kind of a grotesque cover. Not something I would let my grandkids see. <laughs> when they wanted to be seen Santa tortured by his reindeer and elves. So... Uh, okay, this one came from the same person. This is Protest, uh, Pledge to Terror. Uh, this is Texas Thrash Metal, really good thrash, Texas Thrash Metal. I uh, don't know where these guys are these days. I think they're no longer around, but regardless, really like the single. I'm glad to have it in my collection finally. So I was stoked when Rob said, hey, do you want this? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, next up, Mothership. Um, 2017, Dallas, Texas band. Um, kind of a heavy rock almost like a southern rock uh, influence to it but just a heavy I'm gonna I don't know they might call it stoner rock but to me it just has kind of like this heavy 70s vibe so the songwriting is very much like in the 70s but it's got a more modern production so it's got these really heavy guitar riffs uh, and then it's got uh, let's see um, Crown of uh, Crown of Lies on the A side and the B side is Tattooed Lady which is a cover by Rory Gallagher Rory, Gall Rory Gallagher Easy for me to say, right? Um, anyhow, there you go. Very cool to have. Uh, I believe this is a special color version. I think there's a bunch of different color versions out there, but this is a uh, translucent red vinyl. So I don't even always show the vinyl, especially on newer albums, because colored vinyl these days is, you know, everything is colored vinyl now. I mean, it's rare to find black vinyl anymore. So um, anyhow, that's why I don't really show colored vinyl. But on older albums from the 70s and 80s, that's more rare to find colored vinyl. So. All right, two more, two from the same band. This is Overdose. Um, these guys are kind of a mixture of uh, thrash and straightforward heavy metal and a bit of a punk vibe. Literally, I kind of put them in the same league as Motorhead with the sound. Uh, I'm not saying they're a Motorhead clone, but if you're a Motorhead fan, I couldn't imagine you wouldn't dig Overdose at least a little bit. Um, I can't remember where this band is from. But this is a recent release. It's like, it's only maybe four or five years old, I think. I was trying to find the year on it, but I didn't see it. But I think it's like 2019, 2020, somewhere in that area, right before the whole pandemic thing happened. Um, really, really enjoyed this single. It was one of the only singles in the batch that, that Rob gave me that uh, that I didn't know the band from. But he said I would dig it. So if he says I would dig it, I did. Uh, take the deal and um, hit the road. On the splattered records label which i'm assuming is their own label because the next one is from the same band and on the same label splattered records overdose again you can see the same label so the songs are on the run and overdose and let's see if i can see a year on this one. Oh, this one this one says 2019 so maybe that one's, I don't know, I can't remember which one came first, but it doesn't matter. Again, very cool, you know, kind of borderline thrash, heavy metal. Um, when I think of that, I tend to think of like power metal, like, you know, Metal Church, My Rage, uh, Reverend, um, that kind of thing. And that's not really what you get here. This is, like I said, more along the lines of like a Motorhead. It's got a punk influence, which you don't hear in like Metal Church. So, uh, great band. Uh, really like them. I need to actually search them out more and see what else they have out there, because... Right now, these are the only two things I own by them, and the only four songs ever heard by them. So I really dig them. Hopefully, they have a full like that. I will be checking these guys out further. I don't know much about this one. I'm going to show it anyhow. I did listen to it once. I liked what I heard, but I don't know enough to give you a lot of details about it. Ganglion, 
I believe is how you say it. Written and performed by Gang Leon, but this is a Norwegian band. As I understand, there's at least one or more members of Extol in this band, and there's some other Norwegian black metal players in here. Um, and it's uh, from 2002, but the style is not black metal. There's three songs on here, actually. Um, Culmination on the A side, and then the B side is Bedlam, Fever, and Stripped. And it's kind of more of a straightforward hard rock heavy metal sound, uh, which I really dug. Um, I actually didn't know anything about these guys, so I was kind of surprised, you know, to find a, a band that I, um, you know, I, I love Extol, so I was kind of surprised to find a side project I didn't know about. But regardless, very cool. I will be looking more into that one. If any of you guys know any more about this, I'd love to hear about it and tell me about it in the, uh, the comments below. Appreciate that. Back to the UK singles. <laughs> this is a single for Van Halen. Back when, you know, Van Halen were considered a heavy metal band back in their you know late 70s and early 80s. Uh, this is 79. Not a person alive in 1979 would have said that Van Halen were anything but heavy metal. These days, if you say, you know, Van Halen's heavy metal, they just laugh at you and, and say, oh, they're not heavy metal, they're just hard rock. And, okay, but I'm just saying, back in 1978, 79, 80, they were considered a heavy metal band. Every fan I knew, every fanzine, every magazine considered them heavy metal, so... Uh, yeah, they're hard, they're in hard rock now, but that's what they were back then. Thus the sleeve. All right, next up, White Snake. Here I go again. 1982, I believe. This is a, a UK pressing. So you've got um, Here I Go Again and Blood Luxury. This is the original version of Here I Go Again before it was re-recorded and made into a, a glam metal, pop metal track. Um, this is more, a little more bluesy, a little more raw, and I, and I really like this version. Um, and I might like it because I heard it first. You know, you tend to like things that you discovered. And I loved White Snake before they became, you know, popular in the U.S. So then when they came out with Here I Go Again on the 1987 album, it was like, wow, that's different. <laughs> but regardless, uh, it's a great song, cool single to have, and just one that I was missing. Again, another one that I was kind of not searching out, but came across when I was digging. It might have actually been Vinyl Tap that I picked that one up from, too. This one I've had for a while. I just haven't shown it. Japanese pressing of Led Zeppelin. This is um, Misty Mountain Hop and Black Dog. Uh, Zeppelin singles in general, especially um, Japanese singles, these things go for 50 bucks. I've seen them up to upwards of 100 bucks. I've seen them more than that. Um, this one I got for way, way under any of that. Uh, I mean, it, I can't remember the exact price I paid for it, but as I recall, it was like well under 15 bucks. Um, and again, I bought it as with a batch of other ones, so it's nice to have. I love Led Zeppelin. Um, they were one of the you know first wave of British heavy metal bands, one of the inspirations for what became heavy metal in the especially in the eighties. Um, just about every band you know that came out in the late seventies and early eighties were inspired, including Judas Priest. Uh, you know, were inspired by Zeppelin. So very cool one. All right, I am twenty two minutes in, and I am only about halfway through, so I'm going to cut this video here. Next video will be coming soon. Another batch of records is going to be scored. Beans. There's going to be Aerosmith. There's going to be all kinds of cool stuff in there. So check that one out. Appreciate y'all watching. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. All that fun stuff. I really appreciate all you guys. Love hearing from you. Please leave a message below. And I'll talk to you soon. God bless. Stay strong.